Hey, welcome back to what Jank has made. In this video, I'm going to be covering how to create a custom Gatsby data source plugin to pull in JSON information from different sources for us to use within our GraphQL schema. So on my site, we have the usual WP GraphQL uh, setup that I've gone over in this course, which pulls in information about blocks and pages and posts. But sometimes I'm active on other forms of social media, or sort of like portfolio sites like Dribble. So if we go down to the bottom of my website, first off, you'll find a YouTube section, which kind of covers the current series that I'm recording now, which is kind of meta, um, as well as a list of my previous videos, my latest videos. And then when we go down a bit more, we have some access to my Dribble shots. And when you click on one of them, it takes you to the Dribble shot in, well, Dribble. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to be going over how we would create these custom uh, data sources because normally what you do is you'd create a fetch request when somebody hits your website and then that would go and pull down the information. But that's not really the point of Gatsby. Gatsby is meant to be querying the latest information and building a static site, which means when somebody hits my website, we don't have to go and query YouTube. We've already queried YouTube, but the data we need built the schema and use the data in a component before um, the viewer or user of my website has needed to request it. <clears throat> so to get started, we're going to open up our Gatsby project. And what I've done is I've created a plugins folder within the root directory of our site. And let me just move my camera over to the right. If we go into our plugins directory, I've created my own plugin called Gatsby Source Bonus. So because this is a bonus video, I thought it'd be appropriate to call it bonus and I'll kind of go over how the plugin works and how we can set it up. So the Gatsby documentation is pretty good for running through how you set up your own um, plugin, but I'll go through my conventions. So. Gatsby has a list of different APIs you can tap into. The one we've covered so far in this uh, series is the Create Pages API, which allowed us to pro programmatically create pages for our site, removing a lot of manual work and allowing the client or the users of the uh, CMS to generate new builds to the website. Um, but in this plugin, we aren't specifically looking to generate pages. Instead, we want to create something called a source node. So a source node, you can think of as a data source available to us in our GraphQL schema. So all pages, all posts, um, the Gatsby image information you might have, site metadata, all of this stuff kind of exists as information that we can query within our system as nodes. And nodes tend to represent an array of items. So an array of posts or an array of media items or an array of pages or an array of case studies, you get the idea. Um, but what we want to do is we want to create two types of new source nodes. One will be the dribble shots and one will be my YouTube videos. So to kick it off, I've um, imported some configuration for a .env file, which references um, the API keys that you'll find in your Gatsby environment if you set these up. And this is just so that when I publish my uh, files to GitHub, that my API keys aren't exposed to the public and I don't get any warnings and my APIs are secure. So you can configure the .env file credentials in your Netlify setup too. So you can get around um, committing these secure keys to your version control. Next, I'm importing a node fetch package. Um, one thing to note is that this whole plugin setup is going to be using a node process because this will run at build time and use a lot of the node functions that we've covered in our Gatsby node file, where we are sort of running these programmatic functions and building out sources of data or pages. So the next um, package I'm in, uh, importing is query string crypto and path and a lot of these are just sort of like recommended i can actually get rid of that i think keep crypto and we don't huh okay yeah we can get rid of that too so 
fetch will go out and get the information and crypto will um, hash our information as content digest. So I'll, I'll go for it step by step. So export source nodes is calling the API and then we're creating an asynchronous function and bringing in some of the actions and plugin registration uh, sort of uh, functions and fields that we need to make sure we can access this Gatsby source bonus plugin within our other Gatsby files. And then I'm creating a really simple fetch request, um, which is just using node fetch for browser compatibility or rather server compatibility because it's node. And then when we get a response, we're going over each item if the array is more than well, if it's not empty, and then creating a source node in our schema for each dribble shot we find. So we're doing the same again for the YouTube source. And the create node documentation is pretty great because I really didn't have any experience with node before Gatsby, and it was still really easy to understand for a beginner. Uh, creating a source plugin. Great. This is what the whole video is covering. So I'll leave a link to this in my uh, blog post and YouTube video. But Gatsby, again, is data source agnostic. So you can bring in data from anywhere. And this, this is... Okay, well, that's... Cool. So that's like a really short, small example of how you could create a source node plugin. doesn't use some of the registration... Um, properties that I've imported. So I'm not sure if you'd be able to access this so easily from a separate file as a plugin, but this is kind of the syntax you'll want to follow is basically go get the data and then register it as a node in your system. So if you go ahead and copy what I've got, you can probably rework the fetch request to pull any information from anywhere and then rework how you're creating the, the uh, node in your system. For each dribble shot, I'm spreading the object properties. So the title, the image and description, everything else will become available to us within our schema. You have to give them a unique ID. And then if they have a parent, you can give them that, a child if they have it, and then some internal information, which will help uh, create some naming conventions in our GraphQL schema. So once you've gone ahead and you know copied all the syntax and swapped it out for your fetch requests to the JSON endpoints you need to query, then you can go ahead into your Gatsby config file. And because we've registered our plugin under plugins and then Gatsby source bonus, I've called it um, in our plugins array as Gatsby source bonus. If it was Gatsby source YouTube, then you'd call it Gatsby source YouTube, but you just need to make sure you have it in the plugins directory when you're creating it. So now if we go into our terminal and run develop, So it'll take a minute to boot up, but once we're booted up, we can go into our schema now. If I close down these other tabs, what you'll notice now is depending on the names you've given your source nodes is within your Explorer in graphical, you have access to, well, in my case, all YouTube and all Dribble, and then you can even query a, you know, a single dribble shot or a single YouTube video using the field group names. So to get back the YouTube information, uh, it'll depend on how the JSON structure um, gets pulled down or the, how the JSON set up. So in the YouTube uh, request, we'll have a JSON structure, which will have an array of nodes. So we'll have access to nodes and then for each one, we have some internal information. So content, content digest. I'll just loop all these out. You can see the content is essentially all the JSON we have for each node, but it's coming back as one big string. If we close internal and opened up, say snippet, this is more of a, a structure of what we would get instead of this huge payload. Um, you can see some object properties like kind and e tag are available as fields we can query. You can query if it's in playlist, description. And now we have a JSON payload of all of my YouTube videos. 
um, and then some information about it. So we could just, you know, get this JSON and then loop over it and say, for each video, say we'll get the description and we'd also want the title. And maybe you want to get the thumbnails. Um, we'll get rid of playlist. Yeah. So with this JSON payload, what we can do is we can go into our components and I've got a component called YouTube. And in my YouTube component, it's just got some information about my channel. And then we're looping over each video and returning a preview image for each one with a link to the video itself in the actual YouTube website. Now, there are two ways you could query the data that we've just exposed in our new uh, source plugin. One is using a query within the component or which I, the other method which I prefer is moving it to a separate file or component, which is um, I'm using the use static query hook. So I've created a hook called use query YouTube. And this is essentially the query that we've just run in our graphical interface, except it's got a smaller thumbnail and we're bringing back the ID of the video. And then what happens is when I call this hook that I created, we're going to get back an array of all of the videos. And then in my YouTube component, I said, create a constant called channel videos, use query YouTube. And what that'll do is it'll bring all the nodes in as this value. So I can use channel videos map and go over each one. Or if I use the, um, the zero index in the array, it'll target the first video. And it, it just means that when someone accesses my site, we don't have to do say 1000 people access my site. We don't have to do 1000 fetch requests to get information about the videos. We've already done that, but we will go and fetch the, um, the image. That'll be the only thing that we need to load every time somebody hits the page. You could do something with Gatsby image and maybe pull it down as a media node or media item. But I guess that's a bit too technical <laughs> for this video. Um, but yeah, if you have a data source that you want to bring into your system, this is how you would do it. And then you can query it with the new components and basically extend your system out. You don't need to tap into a GraphQL um, schema. You don't have to bring in a specific data source plugin that somebody else has created. You can go ahead and create your own following this video. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment. Maybe give it a like if you want. I'm going to be doing some more uh, Gatsby videos in the future. And I've got a huge series planned up for the new year. So stay tuned for that. Subscribe if you want. Uh, we're going to be covering everything about Gatsby. And uh, I'll be putting out some information about my new course in the coming weeks.